regarding what we did configuration yesterday. But it was basic our ECC configuration, ALE configuration. So anything left or anything, any confusion in that? Nope. So, as of now, we are going to sum it. We need yes. to do some practice. Now, what I am doing, I'm, I will just share my screen in a second. I'm just logging into my C process system. This is your C4 system. This is the landing page. As soon as you uh, type in the login ID and password, this is how your XCI looks. Okay. Uh, the, this is your home screen. Generally, this is landing page and this is the home screen which any hybrid system has, which has different different tiles and different different details showing up front like your my task whatever the task you have assigned your task has been assigned to you your ticket assigned to you <coughs> uh, escalated ticket to me my favorite things i can define my favorite things like one second what is my favorite thing uh, my favorite things i can define Will you Sorry. get the access with the FBI? No, no, no. For the C4C also? With Excel. You got your Hello? Yes, and how will you get this access C4C? Um, again, the same process means uh, you uh, have to raise it to SAP and uh, mm -hmm. But there is no prerequisite that you have to have the uh, any SAP system to have the uh, C4C. You can buy C4C as a sta uh, standalone software also, a standalone their services also. It's like you in the HCI, you need to have some uh, SAP uh, ID or you have to buy for from the SAP. Um, it will be free with your either C4C or either success factor, but there is no uh, prerequisite with the, uh, C4C. You can directly buy C4C. Uh, you just need, you don't have to do the uh, HANA cloud, uh, cloud cockpit configuration. Okay, all the things are available here itself. Okay. Even the adding of custom uh, uh, user and uh, uh, providing the uh, roles also, those are done here itself. No HANA cloud cockpit configuration where you do the, you assign the user and uh, the adequate roles to access the HCA. Nothing like that. Directly, you have to go to this URL. You would be admin. In the administration, you can do this task. Okay? I won't be doing those things, but you can do here. But even we don't have to do. It's the task of C4C administrator. Okay? But let's say this is your initial screen. Okay, you have the feds that <clears throat> this sales quota delivered totally updated by this person. Means uh, all the latest updates, my updates, you can um, sort and uh, get those updates uh, just by uh, clicking my updates, all updates. Uh, this is record uh, uh, according to the uh, sales uh, configuration means this account is for only for the uh, 
business partners and the sales uh, details so means he has the roles to do those stuff only okay now on the left hand side you have home you have your calendar in which you can see what all and you will be able to see what all things are pending against my calendar what are upcoming things in my calendar okay so see weekly monthly that way just like your outlook okay uh, then you have some 25 notifications you can search you can see the you can create new account let it put it yes so these are all the uh, notifications regarding incidents it's not only about my incident it is all the incident which are raised under uh, on this c4c uh, account okay so you can if you want to view it you can view all uh, or if you want just want to view this you can click on more and it will take you to new page where you can view the notifications okay you can so you can see what type of this incident is what is the requirement which has been sent okay so something like that uh, you guys know now what is ex exactly c4c cloud is for or what is crm is for or should i explain it in just a few minutes sanat uh, i don't know exactly uh, uh, CRM system means uh, as per the name uh, uh, customer relationship module it is a module where you or the um, uh, user keep all the details of customer it means earlier it was like this things were means all the sales department things and everything were maintained by the sales guy and if one sales person would leave the company a major part of their uh, means major of their customer and their customer database would be um, taken away by those sales person so two means 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 it was great dependency on a single person if that if that person goes the uh, sales and the details of their customer they just wear off so to avoid those situation those deadlocks and to have a uniform uh, system where they can manage their customer okay, they can manage their customer the dependency on the client uh, on the sales person or the sales representative is minimal and to view what all products and what all details and what all things are being maintained for that customer uh, for uh, uh, products and what sales they have done to that customer that whole thing is saved under a CRM system okay so you whenever you call any call center for your mobile for your Tata Sky for any for any of the services which you are doing they are those customer representative are sitting with a CRM system in front of them and as soon as you give your uh, user ID means whatever the unique identification number you gave them with either it is your mobile number or it's your number uh, subscription number anything as soon as you give them they enter in their system and uh, all your details comes in front of them okay so we are being the customer and they are uh, keeping the customer relationship details about it okay so the initial requirement was in, in the initial uh, uh, requirement for crm was this 
now crm has been added with more features like your business partners your which all products you are have which all people do you have you can take this list okay and this crm cloud this is only one fourth of the features which are available on the uh, on premises crm because CRM, on premises crm it's highly customizable it is uh, it's your on uh, this uh, Cloud C4, C4, it's not that much customizable and that much flexible as compared to the on-premises one. Okay, and the features wise also, your on-premises CRM is um, uh, feature packed. Okay, but but it have their own pros and both have their own cons. Your on-premises system, you need to have your uh, and you have to create your uh, interface to be act, to be able to access this. Uh, CRM anywhere because this is again uh, means if this is customer relationship module and if let's say your uh, uh, sales representative he is moving around everywhere so you have to create a connection for him open the ports and then able to access the CRM over internet but this CRM is already means this C4C it's already over your sim uh, internet and you don't you just need to have one url of it and the user id password a connection is there na sorry i am just asking you guys hello yes anna yes anna you are listening okay. so uh, this is uh, this c4c is already over internet and can be accessible anywhere just require the user id and password and that is good to go that is the same case with any cloud solutions uh, but I'm, i'm talking about this specific crm where exactly it's very handy okay uh, now it's getting popular it's there in the market for 3 plus years i guess so. 3 plus i guess 3 3 years 3 plus years and now it's starting to grip okay uh, these means uh, uh, as of now companies are more uh, leaning towards the cr as uh, success factor the hr cloud which have the same means which have the same things which i have told you means they have they are being uh, success factor is also accessible anywhere from anywhere but now companies have uh, companies are now going for c4c as their solutions also okay uh, there is already one c4c in the market which is very popular the salesforce.com if you have heard of its sfdc okay that is also a, a, a cloud crm solution which is a big competitor for uh, our c4c okay sap c4c and matter of fact even sap has released uh, salesforce.com adapter also for the uh, to connect to salesforce dot com so they want to say that you if you have salesforce dot com uh, crm in your premises you can use those adapters to connect okay and that is again not uh, directly provided by sap it's it has been developed by third party the adventico but you can use them so you can see means uh, how big that software is now get uh, becoming in the market okay anyway so coming back to our c4c this is our hybrid c4c till 2000 mid uh, 2016 first half around the uh, march or april month it was only sap c4c uh, now what they have done is they have added the features or the funs or the functionalities of hybrid also so there is one more module called hybrid marketing you have ever heard of it okay so what after sap bought hybris it took all uh, some uh, features of hybris in procurement and all those areas and it um, um, merged those things into your c4c also so from that time it's the name was changed to hybris c4c okay uh, configuration wise and connection wise for us there is not a single difference okay this 
it is same uh, if it's a hibiscus or cyposi both are the same thing and whatever the stuffs we do in the back end for connecting and for communication between ec uh, hci to uh, cloud it is same but the name has changed with, with some added uh, functionalities okay so this was just a quick background about c4c uh, uh, you there would be different different things where you have different different data like you have the customer data you have the business analytics when i say business analytics here are the reports where which are being generated of days is this much of customers are there uh, this much of uh, this much of sales has been done this much of uh, uh, this uh, what particular uh, campaign has been ran so different different reports you can create and you can view it okay so this report enables uh, sales to perform opportunity analysis what are the opportunities what are the leads uh, what are the conversions there are some uh, uh, specific um, terms in C4C like leads, quotations, uh, means these are means when you have done the marketing, then marketing, after marketing you have some leads regarding those means how many people have approached to you, so those are leads, leads how many of leads have been converted to your potential customers and from potential, potential customers you have the customers, so that is the process. I don't want to go deep into CRM because I have worked on CRM very uh, very intensively in the ECC and also. So that's why it's kind of uh, simple for me to understand this one. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it is very uh, good or it is very important topic for me because I have little bit knowledge about it. So here you can report, uh, generate report. Uh, the business configuration we will be understanding uh, just a few minutes later because this is the basic part where your C4C starts first. Uh, you have the business partners which means who are being your partners and business who are with whom you are doing business and who with whom uh, your business is working smooth. Okay, Your customers, your potential customers, your uh, whoever the customers are uh, in my c 4 um, in my system uh, those would be visible here so these are the customers of the customer list the people's the sales department people's just your employees uh, your sales department uh, sorry this is sales campaign sales campaign is just your marketing okay what is whatever you are doing marketing if you are uh, if you have created any marketing then uh, any sales campaign then those campaigns will be visible here okay. uh, for some particular product or for some particular solution okay that is sales campaign your sales actual sales figures okay and when i say actual sales figures means if you have you have got the leads from your sales campaign if you have uh, created opportunity okay then the sales quota sales quota is something if you are able to um, uh, means you have re uh, the person has uh, requested for some quotation of your product so that again since sales quota what is the forecast report uh, once again sales quota, your forecast administration, okay. So you can explore those things, these are very big thing, okay. okay now your activities, but we will be uh, concentrating on the administrator part. Before going to administrator, let me do the initial configuration which is required in your C4C. So as soon as you get a C4C system, okay, you need to define define uh, a project okay what is a project okay uh, project is a option means uh, 
when you start using your C4C, then you need to configure and you need to tell your C4C system that, okay, I will be working on this, this things and this, this area. Okay, and this would be my operating, uh, I mean, these features I will be availing while operating my C4C or my operating by my CRM system. Okay, so that is the initial configuration which you do in your C4C system. So how do we do that? Uh, what we do, we click on new, but as I am not the administrator of this uh, C4C, I would have the option to create a new implementation. But yes, what we can do, we can edit this uh, already existing project and we will be able to understand all the things which are required here. So as soon as we create a new project, it's, it asks me which country are you from. So let's get populated. So it has already defined the country as India and United Kingdom. Okay. So the project is specific to United Kingdom, so that's why it's United Kingdom. And India, the reason India was selected because the implementation is done from Indian subcontinents, okay, Indian uh, area. So India. Now click on next. Okay. So this is the initial configuration. No one will tell you what this uh, first implementation means and what this project means. It's just that we have the system and we had the access that's why I'm showing uh, uh, and just uh, if possible just concentrate here more because it is uh, only one time I won't be able to show you again and again just things uh, again the next thing comes is implementation focus implementation focus means which cloud are we uh, what feature of cloud are we using okay so uh, it, 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 it means means are we using the hybrid functionality or this plain C4C functionality. So in this case we are just using the plain C4C functionalities and we are not basically uh, into the uh, hybrid marketing. Okay, so we are just we have selected the plain C4C and click on next. <coughs> Now the important thing comes the scoping. Okay, uh, uh, please let let it. Yeah. So scoping, what all things you will be using while in you uh, uh, in this C4C. So you will be using sales campaign. You have selected the sales campaign, sales sales services, industrial solutions. <laughs> Basically, we have selected all, all the features which are available in your C4, we have selected all of them. But for an integration consultant or for integration perspective, always go to communication and information. Okay. There would be sub portions also and those were many. Okay. In the communication integration, this feature, uh, the sub portions are for sales compared also, where you can expand and you can see which all sales uh, campaign like market development, camp uh, camping management, those things if you want to use, you can take those, okay. If not, just deselect those things, okay. In our case, we will be going into communication and information. And this is specific to our integration, okay. Under this, there is an option called integration with external solution. Just click on that. Okay, and select all whichever scenarios which are uh, valid for you. So integration scenario with SAP cloud solution from uh, uh, with uh, cloud solution from SAP as integration with your ERP integration with your hybrid uh, uh, storefront. I'm not sure about exactly what storefront. Uh, functionality of hybrid sales. Okay. Uh, your SAP CRM, the on-premises CRM. Okay. Your high, uh, SAP hybrid marketing. Okay. Your master data, uh, master data integration, or your master data replication. 
your sales figure, uh, sales and marketing process that could be uh, some third party. Uh, your central anal analytics. Central analytics means you you have a system where you have the analytics done and the, those details are imported here and displayed here. So central analytics, your account, uh, 360 overview account. So all the account details and the list goes on. Okay. So select whichever you want. In our case, we are integrating with the ERP external system ERP okay we have selected I'm clicking on next guys I'm there now audible yes sir yes sir yes sir okay so are you able to understand these things Mr. this uh, I guess it's not required for, for you guys but still I'm showing because it's in uh, it might help you in the future so once you have done the scoping of this okay click on next now the communication arrangements those things are comes in the same configuration this is all oh, this all things comes in the initial configuration you can edit it anytime because it at the, at the initial configuration they have not selected the integration with your external system or any of the system you can edit it just like what I'm doing right now okay but <clears throat> your C4C would require integration with your ECC or CRM that is for sure okay okay so from the scoping whatever we have selected now what we will do we will see the uh, detailed uh, uh, what all things are available those details would be displayed here this is the same scoping which we did for the code rent uh, uh, patches uh, if you remember yesterday we had imported one code rent uh, support package in our ECC and then we had the scoping where uh, we uh, uh, ran this that report and we clicked on the scoping that okay which which scenarios would I require to integrate from my ECC to my C4C okay yesterday we did that coding uh, 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 that scoping and with that scoping your uh, ports and your IDOCs and your partner profiles have been created correct so that same type of scoping we are doing in our C4C system also. Okay. Generally this scoping is done by C4C guys, not us. Okay. Now again coming back to our scenario, communication and information. Okay. We need to only concentrate in the integration with external applications. All the other things, the sales, sales campaign, service, industrial solution those would be taken care by the C4C guys, C4C functional guys because they need to know uh, what all features would be used by customer or by the user. Okay. Anyway, now this will give a list as soon as I click on integration with my ERP, just integration with my ERP, uh, something will populate. On. We can directly yes, connect from C4C to SAP? No, no, no. As in uh, without your uh, this uh, tool, HCI uh, tool? Yeah. Yeah, we can, but for that we have to do some SOA configuration in our um, ECC and we have to expose means uh, if you are aware of SOA configuration, we have to expose everything from our backend to the uh, open internet, which is not correct practice. Okay, I got it. I got it. Okay, sir. Normally, normally, uh, none of the customer use that approach because, uh, as Sanat said, uh, ECC will be directly in the internet in that way, and uh, that's the main so, reason. Correct, correct. So we have till uh, uh, take the integration with ERP, and you can see the list 
of scenarios which are available to I mean in the C e ECC uh, in your C4G to connect with your ERP. Same way we had the list yesterday. Okay, so do we want to replicate the data? Do we want to replicate the account? Do we want to replicate the prospect? Your sales sales data. Uh, uh, replicated one. Okay, so this has been already removed. Okay, anyway. Uh, Do you want to replicate account uh, and contacts from your ERP solution to cloud solution? Okay, so just select them, just tick them whatever scenarios suits you. Okay, it means you let's say customer has said we will be replicating our customer from your our on premises CRM or ER, uh, ERP to our uh, C4C if you want to replicate our material whatever material we create in our uh, ERP should be replicated in CRM so that it would be visible for the customer guys to know that uh, this new product has been launched okay and this new sales uh, quotation again if uh, your C4C requires a quotation it will go to your EC system and it will fetch back the quotation so there are n number of scenarios which are possible and they have given the uh, so those one displayed also in front of you <laughs> sorry just a second sorry for that so these are the scenarios just click on next and review the uh, decisions which you have made same way we did in the code rent okay click on review okay so you will see all the what is the review? Have they changed the functionality? Okay, I think they have changed like this. Means a month before, if you directly go to here, the scoping would be available here. it open I'm not sure why it's not opening the review <laughs> anyway so this this review page will show all these options you have selected and it will uh, let you know means it will uh, just give you second chance to review if the things you have selected are correct or not and you can just click on finish this scoping result if you click on scoping result it should it, uh, your uh, your solution proposal it will show that but we don't want to finish it okay we just we will just cancel it and we will uh, move along okay so this is done okay so our scoping initial scoping of our c4c system is done okay any questions for that sir
okay so once this is done the next thing comes means other configuration we are not uh, it's not our concern means uh, how to configure our c4c in terms of aligning with the business solutions which a customer wants we are only concentrating on the connection part okay uh, just i forgot to tell you that your c4c has two type of ui okay again just like your hci you that it has given two ui but both the uis are web ui okay and one ui is your html5 ui if you can see here in your url it is saying html5 ui and one ui is your uh, silverlight ui okay silver microsoft silverlight dot net silverlight ui based on that you can uh, uh, and based on that your uh, your c4c ui is available so initially all the configuration all the administration part and configuration those were done only on the microsoft silverlight and your uh, uh, html you had only the feature to view those things okay only the uh, standard things like business partners business uh, customers people those were available on your html and business configurations administration those were only available on the uh, silverlight but now recently they have uh, provided those features in your html and HTML5 is quite fast as compared to Silverlight. Okay, that is the reason they have provided those features here also. Now click on the administrator. Okay, not the beta administrator. Beta administration is for other purposes, means uh, service uh, and <clears throat> simple, simple configuration. Okay, but administrator it contains details in uh, terms of what is the uh, means if you are creating some uh, changing the organization organization structure the uh, language what are the product administration all those things are available in administrator tab and you have different different tabs also in your administrator you have the general settings you have the service and social sorry sales and campaign setting flexibility uh, business flex flexibilities you have the background job, business analytics, list incidents, the incidents which we, uh, 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 we, have, we have seen at the first initial incident, workflow rules, approval process. So this is full-fledged administrator configuration. Now we will be concentrating on the communication system configuration. So communication system, click on this what is communication system now communication system is the place from where you define the sender sender or receiver system okay so let's say in respect to the c4c we have an ecc system so ecc system can send and receive data and our ecc system was ee6 okay um, if your one more system is your another C4C system, so it can communicate between C4C to C4C or cloud to cloud connectivity. Okay, so same thing, all the steps are identical for cloud also and for the uh, cloud to this uh, on-premises. Okay, uh, now to create this, let's cl click on new communication system. Okay. Let's say my communication system was an system. So I will give a name EE6. EE6. Okay. Uh, the host URL. So host name. As of now, it's not compulsion, but you should give the host name of your HCI, not your ECC, but your HCI. Why I'm saying that? Because it, this will directly go to this host and through this host it will send the details to ECC6 e6 system okay so you need to specify the 
host details as your HCI URL. One second. So from there, what you do means you provide the HCI URL and which one would be the URL? Uh, your runtime, oh, not runtime. I guess it's the standard URL. Okay. Now, if once you have given this URL, uh, define what type of system access is this? Is this over internet access? Yes, this is internet one. Give the technical name. What is the technical name of my um, uh, E6 system? So it would be E6 CLNT something client 100, 800, 300. Uh, what is the last name? What is the email address of the administrator? Those things. Okay. So once that's the, that that is done, one second. Uh, I will show in the actual configuration, uh, actual one. So this is the E6 which I have created. Okay. So what the name? What did the, I gave the name here? I gave the name as EE6 system. The host name as my uh, runtime URL. Uh, runtime URL of my HCI. Okay. Uh, I just didn't give the technical details and I clicked on the business instance. Okay. In the business instance, I have given the same the system instance ID. Again, my business. Uh, system ID is EE6. My logical system name is EE6 CLNT812. Client is 812. And it is over web services. Okay. So how do we do this type of configuration? I will just edit and I will show you. Here, what I have given, I have given these things. Okay. These things. And in the system instance, I have provided this. Uh, details so system instance ID your business system ID your logical system ID your SAP 812 and your preferred uh, application protocol so it says XI IDOC HTTP or web services okay. so we are on the web service okay. and you can see there are some hello Guys, there? Yes, Anath. Yes, Anath. Yes, Sorry, I'm just dropped. Anyway, so there is some communication uh, arrangement scenarios which are available here. Sorry for that sound. Uh, communication arrangement uh, which we will see how they get attached to this communication system. So by creating this, we have created a system which will be identified for sending and receiving the data. So we have a system communication system here ready. Okay. Now the next thing comes is communication arrangement. Click on communication arrangement and you have to define which all arrangement you want to use for this E6 system. So again, what are communication arrangement? Uh, in the scoping, we have defined that, okay, we would be requiring uh, to send this, this data to outer system. But which outer system, where it is coming from, okay, those things are defined here. So, click on new. First of all, identify the scenarios in this list. So, let's say you have the communication, 360 over, overview account integration, your business agreement replication from external system, uh, business partner customer fact from your SAP business suit, replicate uh, business uh, business partner replication from your business suit. So this might be the one which would be whatever whatever you select from. the scoping will it come here, Sanat? Yes, automatically it will come here. Okay. You cannot create first of all directly. Okay. Okay. And I'm not sure about uh, what extent the cust uh, uh, customization is possible in the C4C that you can create your own business communication scenarios. I'm not sure about that. 
but yeah you can edit this business scenarios that is I, that i know but that is something the task of your c4c guys we don't need to go so deep in your c4c configuration okay um uh, click on the business partner replication for business suit just for the reference okay click on next Now, which communication system should I use? Which is the communication system I I have created? EA6. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, EA6. EA6 underscore E6 underscore ERP. We have given the name E6 underscore ERP. ERP underscore E6. Communication system ID was E6. Just select that. Okay. So it will say <coughs> now something called code list mapping what is the code list mapping code list mapping is the definition on which you would be defining the data which means the mapping which means let's say from the sender system uh, it is giving some abc and at the receiver system it wants uh, def which we uh, which we have done the code uh, mapping in our hca but again c4c also gives you the option to upload your mapping, and if it say it, uh, your mapping was not done at the HCI end or any third party end, it, it's directly sending, then you can add a code list mapping in your uh, C4C itself and you can click on down and you can uh, uh, select from the code list mapping. But in our case, we haven't, uh, we have already done the uh, mapping in our HCA so it's only simple on SAP on-premises integration standard on SAP on-premises integration if not then you have to create your mapping in your ECC you have to download those mappings and you have to import those mappings to your C4C again a longer task just uh, uh, just leave it or ignore it just think of it as it is a standard mapping way okay um, Click on next. You have defined that the code list mapping is this one. Now, what type of communication method is this? Okay, so in this case, it's directly direct connection. Okay, and for that specific business partner replication, you have two scenarios. One is the inbound communication, and one is the outbound communication. What is the inbound communication? The data is coming to the C4C, and outbound communication. The data is going from C4C to ECC. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so now I have to do configuration of both if both of the system, uh, both of the scenarios are active. Okay, if my outbound is active, then I will pick here and I will select the format conversion as uh, application protocol as my format conversion because I am sending my data outside. If my data is coming inside my system, so I can select the reliable messaging or the normal web service. There are two types of that. You have the web service and web service reliable messaging. Okay. Uh, for inbound, I can select that what type of authentication do I want. Do I want a certificate based authentication or just the URL, uh, user ID password uh, authentication? To give the access to some user, okay, we can uh, assign a user ID. We have assigned this user ID and if you remember the same user ID is also placed in the uh, uh, HCI also, okay. Kind of little bit. Okay. So you can assign a user and password here. Okay. Or you can also have the certificate pair, key pair of your uh, private uh, public key certificate pair. You can import it here. But we will be going with the ERP EE6 user ID itself. Okay. Now when it comes to your outbound, Okay, in outbound, you can define which protocol is there. So first of all, the, you have to uh, do the format conversion. You have to convert the data in your web services. 
then the authentication would be based on your uh, certificate. Let's say if you have the certificate based authentication, then you have to go with the certificates which are provided by C4C. Okay. And uh, let's say if my C4C is the sender, then what I do, I can, um, if you remember in the sender uh, channel, I import the certificate of my C4C, correct? So those certificates are downloaded from here. Okay. Uh, the, at the, if the ECC is my sender system, then I would download the certificate from S Trust. But if my C4C is the sender and I want to have a certificate based communication, then I will download it from my, uh, this communication arrangement and specifically from this area. Okay. Guys understood? Yeah, yes, and so this certificate will be loaded into HCI for command center, right? Correct, correct, correct. So this is means uh, we ask for uh, generally it's our task to ask the C4C guy for the uh, certificates of their uh, system. So this is correct. where they will go, they will download and they will provide it to us. Correct, correct. Okay. okay. Now go to the advanced settings. So this is just the initial settings. In advanced settings, we will be creating the URLs. Okay. And the uh, uh, URLs for our system. So for the inbound process, let's say you have an inbound uh, data coming to your CRM. For that, they have hard-coded this URL and we do the configuration based on this only. So yesterday I showed, you know, I have given the host and a port detail and apart from this, the URL was uh, a standard one. I just wanted, I just given the value to the variable and that's it. The configuration of my uh, iFlow was done. Okay. So same thing. This is the URL for, let's say, business partner. Uh, a replicate business partner attachment from ERP uh, from business suit or business partner replicate, uh, uh, replicate business partner from this one. So you will see that I have just provided this URL. I can provide directly this URL or the uh, variable substitution where in the host I have provided the host detail and also we need to provide the ports uh, ports also the 443 which I have shown you. The 443 also in the URL of my HCI. That is something at the receiver end. So I told you from the uh, C4C system, we want the uh, URL to hit their database. So this is the URL of their database or, or they are exposing their database via this URL and that is specific to your business partner. But now when it comes to the outbound, when I say outbound, my data is going outside my data going outside my C4C and going to my HCI system. And as per our HCI configuration, we specify a URL in the sender uh, adapter and from that sender adapter, all the sender system, let's say it's your ECC or say it's your C4C, all the systems have to send the data to specifically that uh, uh, URL path. So, this is where we do that configuration. So your host name, which we have defined for our E6 already. Okay. We, what we will do, we will just provide the path prefix, whatever we have deployed in our ECC, uh, in our HCI. So same path CFX slash our, let's say demo, whatever I create now, I will provide it here. Demos uh, slash HCI slash GOIP, if it's in GOIP scenario, then GOIP, if, uh, hello? Yeah, 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 yeah. If so it's a GOIP, then same, that. This path is the same path of your IDOC adapter path, right? Tender lab. Tender adapter path. Correct. Okay. Okay, now you see now where this thing comes, means where it is required to configure.
okay now uh once this is done okay your basic configuration your advanced configuration your communication arrangement all these things is done just go to review review the changes uh, review the uh, development you have done changes you have done okay for inbound outbound anything everything okay and see my now sender url is this one uh, uh, demo at ca uh, uh, goip anything and i will say complete so one business partner would be created okay no i don't say so this is what we do in the initial configuration or the conf uh, only configuration in your c4c apart from this we don't do any of the configuration or any of the uh, uh, integration uh, scenarios uh, in your c4c means this is the steps which you need to follow and these are identical for all the scenarios each and every scenario whichever you configure in your c4c okay now once you have done you have done the configuration system configuration arrangement you go to communication scenario but this is just for viewing and uh, activating those scenarios let's say uh, you have this many scenarios uh, and, and this is not the part of exactly our communication arrangement we don't want this scenario to be required this configuration to be required so let it be keeping it aside now once you have the uh, configuration ready you go for the monitoring okay so what is monitoring where exactly your messages are flowing so click under the system administration there is something called web service message monitoring click on that and you will find out which all messages have been flown in last 24 hours in last seven days okay In the last seven days, you had some business partner ERP application that has been cancelled to some reason. Uh, with, uh, okay, so you can click on this and you will get those details in near down. Okay. Uh, third party communication while processing inbound third party communication. Okay, so this is some third party, the CRM. CRM ISU, this is the system uh, from where the uh, data, uh, to whom the data was being sent. No, no, it was incoming, sorry. The data was coming from this system. And due to some third party communication error, this was, this went into error. Anyway, so this is where you do the monitoring, same like your HCI also. But here exactly you do the web services or messages which are coming in your c4c you do this monitor okay so any questions till now sir guys no, sir, no. very good so what we'll do, do we will end the do you have any documents on this yes i have it not to worry about that can you share uh, it yeah yeah it's for you guys only yeah <laughs> okay yeah i have the standard document also i have my own document also if uh, that is required for you guys okay end to end config, uh, customer standard scenario here i have uh, done the configuration only in hci side okay so click on this view metadata download it import those to my uh, project okay and um, then your project would be having this iflow uh, do the configuration import the certificates do the uh, uh, provide the uh, address url so it is directly in parameters underscore prop not in the externalized parameter the externalized parameter is also an option but i have given the uh, ultimate one canada dot, uh, dot prop where you can define your uh, variable substitution, 
then you do the configuration of receiver system okay uh, and if you want to change your mapping then you can uh, do the mapping uh, uh, mapping things also one thing one thing i just forgot one thing i just forgot in c4 c one second just a minute just a minute Uh, so business part is written from this one, uh, this one. Okay. Now, once we have created, I told you know uh, we want the visual from the sender side or the receiver side, correct? Uh, that day, that day I told you that uh, if there is a change in the structure from sender and uh, from the C4C and then we would require the visual from C4C. So again once you have configured your visual will be automatically generated and you can download those visual to your Eclipse. Okay. So if you have some visual changes, if you have done some changes in your uh, receiver system of your C4C, if you have changed some or added some functionality in your business partner or something like that so that would be automatically will be displaying in the uh, download visual you can download this visual you can remove the existing predefined or standard mapping okay and you can place this mapping and do your uh, uh, um, customized mapping with your idoc okay or with with anybody so here again go to communication arrangement in the inbound services you would be provided or in outbound services also you would be provided with download the visual and this visual will be provided to the hci guys or integration guys or us guys okay and then we will import that to our hci just the way we did earlier and we do the required mapping okay I guess that was missed because I saw this mapping. Uh, if I want to change some mapping things or something like that, I can do this. Uh, I can deploy these things. Okay, deploy these things and test the scenarios. Okay, so this document will be more than enough for you guys. Okay. Uh, also. Uh, I have attached one, uh, I have one more document creation of your visual uh, in your Eclipse itself, okay, but this is rarely used and we are dependent on the structures and visuals from the sender and receiver side, but uh, if required you can uh, go through this document and come back to uh, and create your own visual, okay, and this is very detailed document, okay, this is an a detailed document of creating your visual via your Eclipse. Okay, so you have all these steps. Click on here. Click on the web service. Create your own visual own structure, and you would be. It will ask for the sender uh, details. Uh, your uh, uh, fields which are required. Uh, how many time it would be recurring occur. So same thing which we do in the PI is the same thing means minimum occurrence, maximum occurrence, if it's simple one or complex one, okay, so same way. You can use this document and create your visual out of it, okay. And this visual is uh, universal for your HCI also, PI also, so that's all, okay. So any questions till now, sir? That's not I'm good. Okay, okay. So uh, you understood now because we have almost uh, we have completed the integration of our ECC and C4C, and now we are in the uh, portion of just tomorrow we will be having one more little bit session, uh, and then we will be going for the uh, this uh, last session on our. Uh, seventh, uh, no.
9th of our this june we will be ending our sessions so we have almost covered all the things okay uh, just go through the documents i will be sending this document today itself okay all these documents all the things which i have placed even the uh, uh, runtime url also and the adapters uh, i guess you have received the adapters or not till now the adapter different different adapters configuration hello no document you are talking about right this document no we didn't receive that uh, but there is no screenshot actually you told you will be having all the steps right sorry 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 sorry, sorry. Uh, you told uh, on the document you will be having all the steps right screenshot yeah, it's all the steps yes, yes. can you open on document the soap uh, rm no no not rm okay so it has all the things which are required this standard things okay you can it will provide me the parameters means where in the soap one what all parameters let's say i have to give this example if i have to import this or not um all these things this were provided by sap to me okay so i have providing this to you guys okay it was provided to guys who have attended the uh, session at the sap okay. so this documents were given to those guys so anyway this take it with you and don't share that much okay sure yeah. uh, we received this document we received this nice nice share this doc whatever document i am i am sending to you don't share that to me it's not that i i have any uh, i am just keeping it to your uh, myself or like that but this documents are created by me and means kind of you have paid for those so don't share um yeah, yeah, these are very sure, really important sure sure yeah you not share it yeah sure so like not to share <laughs> no ardent part but try uh, not to share. no no that's that's fine uh, can i can i do one question so do we, do we have any kind of a thing to for message level security and all encryption decryption which we need to handle in Yes, we have those. So uh, that is the thing which I will be covering tomorrow: the transport okay. level security, the message level security, the encoding. I will be giving you an overview on that. <laughs> okay. Sorry, sorry. So that I will be covering tomorrow, and that would be our last portion. Okay. and and deployment strategy do you have any kind of a deployment strategy or kind of a thing as it do you have any kind of a deployment strategy how you deploy from test server to production server what are the how pre requisites what yeah server? transport you told already we are not going to create transport right so right from other yeah. environment there is no option this is a deployment way right okay, it is not trans Yeah, so I we have completed this document, correct? The transport mechanism in our HCA. No. Which one? Which one? This one I have already covered. Where if you are moving from your quality to development, you have to go to download the uh, 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 <coughs> configuration, whatever uh, uh, the uh, this one. If the deployed artifacts are there you have to select those artifacts either go to this one okay in your monitoring go to this one no this is not to you you not taken it okay so okay so one more topic tomorrow this one and your uh, transport level security tomorrow itself yeah yeah transport management or whatever deployment deployment management another one is your uh, encryption description one Yes, but there is no uh, uh, transport management here. Yeah, yeah, I understood. Understood. Only thing is you need to deploy it on the different server. That's it. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Anyway, guys, 
Hey, Sanat, I have one question. So, you have any idea? So, if I am using a SFS adapter in a PI on-premise, so whether I can import the query on it? Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. So, in the on-premise uh, PI adapters, uh, so I can't able to find the module actually. So, any way I can import the query in PI, any idea? So, or we need to do the development in HCI only. We have to do that development in HCI itself. No, I don't have HCI platform right now. So, only on promise PI. But I have an adapter, uh, SFS adapter. Okay, okay, you are talking about that. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, I think you can uh, uh, use the uh, HCI Eclipse, no, for that. Yeah, already I'm using Eclipse only. No, 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 no. If you want to create that query, you can mm -hmm. use the Eclipse to create that query and then you can import that to your uh, PI. Because that I'm not sure about... That will work? I, query is query, you know, that is a standard query. It should work. Uh, what about the structure? I can import the structure to PI? No, because, see, PI, if it's in PI, if it's in HCI, at the end, it is accessing the success factor uh, system, and success factor system would have the standard structures. Because uh, whenever we are accessing the uh, success factor, they have some standard structure which, through your query uh, builder, whatever query builder, we access those structures, and then we create the query. So same structures would be valid valid for HC, uh, PI also, now. What's where's the difference? Because as of now, I haven't got the chance to create any adapter in the PI, but mm -hmm. as per my knowledge means, I have given the query to my PI guys also. So whatever I created, I have given to my PI guys also, and they are using. So I don't think there is any issue in that. Okay. Okay. You can use it. Means uh, I would ask them, my friend, and I will see if they are changing anything there, but. As for my knowledge, they are they are and they just copy paste there. Yeah, can you check with them because we are trying to implement in on premise because it's already developed in Delbumi. So we are trying to implement the same thing to into a PI. But in Delbumi also your query must have been. Yeah, yes, yeah, query is there. I try to copy the query and put it in the uh, PI parameter, but it's not working. Um, I guess the dollars, uh, the word the dollar which comes into picture, I think that will create a scene. Uh, just a second, just a second. I'm, I'm sharing my screen. Okay. And here, Shankar, Vina, if you want to uh, drop off, it's not a big deal. It's just a uh, project related query he was asking. Okay, okay, Shankar, yeah. Thank you. Let's, let's meet tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And just come up with some questions if you have because we are last in the last few hours of our training, okay? Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's late enough for you? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's already told. Yeah, it's okay. Another 10 minutes. Uh, same, uh, the URL and the thing I gave in HCI also, the Eclipse Neo, and try to uh, import the query, but it is not fetching it, so I am not sure. Why so? I am not sh I don't know whether, f uh, we, I gave the proxy settings also, but still it is not populating the module. I am just making a presenter, just for me. Oh, I'm not in my office screen actually. Oh.
So it's my personal laptop. Can you? If you don't have access, then uh, I can connect tomorrow. So I didn't bring my laptop actually today. So it's an office. Anyway, yes, yeah, you can bring it tomorrow and we can extend it five five ten minutes later also. Then. Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, you have in, developed anything in a HCA? Can I see you uh, for a minute? Your screen for a minute. Success? The success factor configuration, so how oh, you're done. And, so, what uh, adapter you're using? So, you're using ODATA adapter or uh, success factor adapter there? Success factor adapter. No, oh, okay. It's always success factor. I mean, see, success factor by default, they cannot be the sender adapter. It is triggered by either ECC or by the uh, 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 either your this one. Uh, so I have a success factor sender also, right? Adapter. You have it, but generally we don't tend to use those in the standard practice. Also, SAP don't tend to create the success factor as a sender adapter. Okay, there are times, but uh, the best practice is either keep it get it triggered from ECC or create a bad job and create a send request reply which will get the dis uh, details from success uh, uh, success factor and you can use it further no, here they are uh, getting say my sender is success factor and my target system is right tire so it's a third party okay 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 so that uh, at that scenario i haven't done answer. So that's how the Dell Boomi they are developed already. Okay, okay. Okay, Sanada. So we will connect tomorrow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Surely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.